Southern University. It is a Thursday night hoop set here in the low country. Charleston Southern and Tennessee State. Hello, everybody. Peyton Gallagher, Evan West, and this is College Basketball on ESPN Plus. And Evan, we anticipate a fun and fast matchup here in this one. One that will come down to the three-point line. Oh, no doubt about that, Peyton. We got a little tussle with the Tigers tonight here at the Buckdom. Both teams coming off wins, both looking for win number four on the season. We've got young programs with something to prove. Mm -hmm. We're going to see it on the court tonight. Absolutely. We saw on the court about a week ago an excellent performance from Sheck Fay from deep. Your high four threes from him. He is our man to watch tonight. Yeah, the transfer from Eastern Kentucky has been cold to start the season, but he left that cold shooting in the North Pole. He's back <laughs> down south, and he really made a difference in that win against Tarleton State. Four of six from the three. He needs to shoot well tonight in order for CSU to pick up this win. He's counted on coming off the bench. Looking to stay hot today, an unseasonably warm day here in the Palmetto State, about 75 degrees as we head into holiday season. At the center circle for tip-off. And the Bucks will control it. Talik Chavez starting the game off for Barclay Redabas team. Yeah, Talik Chavez, the transfer from Iona, playing for Rick Patino last year. It's going to be counted on to score. He still hasn't really settled into this offense yet, but we're still so young into the season, seeing uh, these CSU players really trying to find their form. Early turnover there for the Bucs. Tennessee State sets up for their first possession. Here's a three. A little bit short from Boyd. As Buskey picks up the rebound. I think tonight we have two evenly matched teams, really equal whenever you look at the talent on each side of the court. You don't see a huge disparity, even height-wise. They're so similar, and uh, both teams coming off not the best years. 3-18 and for CSU last year, 4-19 and for TSU. Of course, it's a long time ago. And uh, Tennessee looking to already equal their win total from last season tonight. Here's Chavez. Now Busky. Chavez. Ball fake. Shots away and it goes. Three point shot from the corner as the Iona transfer notches one from deep. And that's what you want to see if you're Barclay Radabaugh. Your team hit some shots early, get some confidence, and get a lead in this game. Nicholson trying to answer and misses badly. Here comes Chavez. Price, tough take, and the follow is good. It's Sidarius Bowser with the right hand. Now Sidarius Bowser with the and one to clinch the win last week at Tarleton State. That was a massive, massive road win for CSU against Billy Gillespie's team. Now with an opportunity to introduce the third member of our team, it's Anna Witte with a report on Tennessee State's post play. Thank you, Peyton. A big piece of the paint presence for the Tigers is back in action tonight for Jalen Debris has missed the last three games due to an injury and a car accident. A big emphasis for the Tigers head coach, Brian Collins, is getting better inside the paint. He now having the 6'8 forward in the game. Jalen Dupree is averaging 68% from the field. He's going to be a huge piece of them inside the paint. The biggest obstacle that he may face is that new knee brace on his left leg. Thank you, Anna. It is Emmanuel Dewana, the Purdue transfer, that gets a start, but we will certainly see Dupree throughout this one. Yeah, you talk about transfers. Dupree already in his third Division I program. He's played at Murray State, Samford down in Alabama, and now looking to make his mark at Tennessee State. And Evan, those transfers, a theme on this Tennessee State roster. Yeah, really a theme across college basketball, but... Whenever you come off of a 4-19 season, Penny Collins, the head coach for Tennessee State, looking for a quick fix, and with transfers, you can certainly do that. 
Three runs out, an offensive rebound resets the clock for Charleston Southern. Here's Busky from deep. Another three-point miss. Chavez this time. That rims out. And it is Boy that finally clears the glass. Already three offensive rebounds and extra possessions for CSU if they continue to attack the boards like this. It's going to be a long night for the Tigers. Tigers looking for their first field goal, 15 on the shot clock. A three, Boyd, 0 for 2 from deep for Boyd to start. And Busky feeding Chavez the hot hand, looking to keep him going. Busky gets it back, that won't go either. Nicholson, tough catch in a crowd. Lost the handle. Price with numbers. Swerving into the lane, absorbs the contact, gets the finish. And it looks like it may have been called a charge. It was. Yeah, it sure was. It was a nice play. Dedrick Boyd and Kenny Cooper both right there, but look at Boyd standing in. His feet certainly look set. A couple changes coming on as Sheck Fay heads into the game for the first time. Scored 15 against Tennessee State when he saw them last year. It's a member of Eastern Kentucky in the OVC. And he gets a rebound. There's Sheck Fay, the 6'7 swingman. Such a luxury to have in the Big South Conference. You don't see many 6'7 wings out there. It's usually a 6'7 big man, but he is truly a perimeter player who does most of his damage from away from the basket. Freshman Claude L. Harris, Jr., Difficult mid-range shot. Clatters off the right side of the iron. And Harris is a volume scorer. That looks like a bad shot, but that's a shot that you're going to see Claude L. Harris make more times than not. This guy does not lack anything in confidence, and when he gets it going, you better watch out. Boyd pot free, and he still can't find the range. Florence claps a rebound between his hands. Good ball movement. Florence. Offensive rebound. Faye can't finish. Oh, man. Huh. That's a tough one. I mean, that's just a bunny that you're blowing right there. Him and Tajay Kelly both had an opportunity at that ball. With the timeout on the floor, we will step aside. It is Charleston Southern with the early advantage. Something big. Ingalls, a proud sponsor of Big South Sports. See the huddles there? It's Brian Penny Collins trying to figure out how to spark up some offense for Tennessee State. Only one point here in the first four minutes and change. As you take a look at Barclay Radapa, his team ding up right now, Evan. Yeah, Barclay Radapa's team still young whenever you look at just the combined amount of playing time that these guys have had together, the chemistry that they're still developing, but anytime you go on the road against a team like Tarleton State, coached against former Texas Tech, Kentucky A&M coach Billy Gillespie, come away with a win, it's impressive. I'm telling you, what we're going to see from their confidence tonight is going to come from that victory last week. Sheck Faye at the line made the first 88% on the season. That will help the average. The lead is 7-1 to one for Charleston Southern. I didn't realize the ref blew the whistle on that missed layup uh, by Faye, so that certainly makes sense why he was so off on that. This crew today led by Teddy Valentine, an experienced official. No call there. A lot of contact on the inside. Here's Cooper into a crowd. He's turned away by Kelly, and here come the Bucks. Nice pass. And the three falls. It's Jaquavian Florence, the sophomore from Atlanta. Yeah, the sophomore out of South Atlanta High School is actually the Big South freshman of the year a couple times last year. He played well. Mid-range shot falls. Difficult look for Diedrich Boyd, but he connects much-needed bucket. Yeah, that's right. Tennessee State needs to develop something offensively, but more importantly, put a lid on the basket for CSU. Good turnover there. Nice feet ahead. Johnson went for the stuff and couldn't finish. Man, 
You hate to see that. Shaquem Johnson just missing an absolute gimme right there. Mm -hmm. Chavez, long three. I uh, like CSU's confidence tonight. They have just come out firing like the Golden State Warriors, like absolutely no fear. Somebody forgot to put a man on Jalen Dupree as he stamps his name onto the game for the first time. Two-handed flush. Yeah, Anna Witte told us what Coach Collins said Jalen Dupree brings to this team, the toughness inside. Wasn't too tough of a shot for him right there. An easy two to put this game within reach. Shot clock running down and another turnover for Charleston Southern. That's an area where this team has struggled all year long. Well, and it's also just a byproduct of having an inexperienced team on the floor. The lack of having a true point guard. You have Chavez playing quite a bit of point guard for them. I think he's more of a true two. D.D. Buskey has played a lot of point guard over his career, but he's a shoot first guy. So once you have a primarily ball handler, a primary ball handler, excuse me, I think this offense will flow a lot more. CSU team feels like if they're able to find a little bit more shooting, limit those turnovers, could really find some improvement approaching conference play. Well, that's certainly the goal is the pocket gets picked by Knox. Here's Knox. Tough finish with the left hand. Kiss off the glass for two. Yeah, Emery Knox from just up the road in Myrtle Beach. Doesn't get a lot of playing time, but making the most of it here. Just checked into the game with a steal on the finish. And he gets another steal. Nearly lost it. Able to navigate the crowd and bring it across the timeline. Into the corner, Buskey. Yes! <laughs> TD Buskey wide open, and Coach Collins doesn't like it. Big body bends. You know it used to be Buskey as he notches home the triple, and it is all Bucks in the first seven minutes. Well, I'm telling you, it really is all about this outside shooting right here as we get another look at the turnover, the defense leading to offense. First, it's Knox with the layup. And then second time, it's uh, D.D. Buskey just wide open in the corner. He's going to make you pay more times than not. Coach Barclay Radabaugh has to be happy with his team right now. The ball really jumping on the offensive end and not sticking much. Well, and not only that, he has to be happy, like you said, but not playing their best basketball right now. I know they aren't taking care of the ball as much as they'd like to, but the offensive rebounds have been the difference in this game so far for CSU. Absolutely. Hitting the glass hard. And now Anna Whitley with something from the CSU sideline. Charleston Southern wants to lead the nation in offensive rebounds. Right now they're averaging 41 a game. In that last timeout, Coach Raiden Ball wants his team to continue to rebound and box out, really deny Tennessee State from driving inside the paint. Right now, Charleston Southern is out rebounding the Tigers 11-4. Thanks, Anna. I was trying to feed that pass inside was Knox, carried around, and it's going to stay with CSU. Yeah, Sidarius Bowser was calling for that ball for a minute, but Knox couldn't see around two defenders. If he had just thrown that dime a second sooner, I think Charleston Southern would have came away with a flush. Instead, another opportunity. 16 on the shot clock as the Bucks will trigger from underneath the basket. Waddell Harris, I really like this kid. I mean, this guy is coming on strong. He's a true freshman out of just outside of New Orleans, Louisiana. Shot clock running down. Buskey's got to get something up. Decent look. Another missed three. Now Buskey's had the hot hand, so you're comfortable with him taking that shot. Rhythm shot. Fitzgerald. That won't fall. Offensive board and a hard foul. No free layups. That was a good foul by Buskey right there on Christian Brown. Christian Brown, this is a guy I have a feeling we'll talk quite a bit about tonight. It's a strong move to just get in there and punch that ball away. But Christian Brown, a transfer from Georgia, coming off of his best game uh, in his young career in a Tennessee State uniform, 19 points in the win against Lipscomb. Can't get the free throw there, but... 
Brown, six foot six, played in 31 of the 32 games for Georgia last season. So it's not like he was just a bench warmer for the Bulldogs. I mean, this guy got a ton of significant time in the SEC. So mm. excited to see what he'll bring to this Tigers team. Lead back down to six. And yeah, Brown, absolutely a guy to watch. Huge game for him, as you said, against Whoop. Lipscomb. That's a nice Whoop. move. Knox puts it Whoop. up and puts oh. it in. He just put him in the washing machine right there. A little spin cycle. And then he gets the floater to fall. Emery Knox playing for more minutes tonight. Making a big impact here in the first half. Baseline drive, a lot of contact, but looks like Brown stepped on the baseline. And look at Barclay right up on the court. He is pumped up. Under 12 media timeout is Charleston Southern up by eight. And it is the Bucks striking first as they lead here inside the Buck Dome, Tennessee State 17 to nine. Again, Peyton Gallagher, Evan West, and Anna Whitty on the call for you. And Evan, what's been going right for Barclay Radabaugh's team? Well, at this point, it's like Anna alluded to. It's all about the rebounds, the battle of the boards. Both teams still not shooting all that hot. CSC with 40% of the field, which is respectable by their standards. On the other side, Tennessee State, 27 percent ice cold i mean we're talking about some frigid numbers but nice defense there to force the turnover and if penny collins is going to point to something that his team is doing well they are forcing the bucks into a couple mistakes that's right that's their fifth already hard to believe you got five turnovers in the first eight and a half minutes and you're up by eight so Things going well for the Bucks, but certainly a couple of things to tighten up on. Some early minutes for Monty Johal as Fitzgerald gets up inside and couldn't roll it home. May get a second bite of the apple, though. Fader falls and one. Yeah, Marcus Fitzgerald, just an absolute impressive freshman year. Still technically a freshman because of that COVID year, but uh, this guy has been outstanding coming out of nashville tennessee mm -hmm. so he decided to stay home and this guy a three-star recruit you don't hear about a lot of three-star recruits staying at tennessee state but that's what penny collins has done for this program he's bringing in talent completes the three-point play and yeah evan he's an extremely gifted player played at brentwood academy in nashville hometown products got to play jv on the brentwood team whenever darius garland was at brentwood now making money in the NBA, but he's a guy who had a lot of offers early on, tore his ACL, finds his way to Tennessee State, and he's had a good start to his career. Yeah, and Tajay Kelly. And another With three falls rebound. for Charleston Southern as we head to Anna for something on the team on offense now. Anna? Coach Collins in that last timeout told his team they just need to slow down offensively. They're rushing the ball, and that's led to four turnovers so early in this game. Well, they force a turnover of their own. Here's Kelly in the clear and puts it down with two hands. You love to see the flush from the true freshman, Tajay Kelly, six foot eight. 240. I don't know if he's actually 240. I would think he's got a couple more pounds than that, but that's what he's listed at. He's a big body bruiser in the paint. Another takeaway. Buskey dancing on his defender. Now Faye. Big time drive inside is turned away by Dewana. Dewana. Out of Purdue, six foot eight, but that wingspan ain't six foot eight. I'll tell you that. Another look at this. Sky's <laughs> up. And you saw that one coming as Dewana rotated from the backside, measured it up well. well they're going to need more of that. They need some sort of intimidation of the CSU team because the green light is on for the Buccaneers. Here's Kelly. Nearly got his pocket picked, made a nice pass, a lot of contact, and a foul. And CS that's CSU Harris. having a lot of success right now, Evan, excuse me, from behind the arc, but now starting to get a little bit more penetration. Well, it's because they've spaced the floor out that Tennessee State has to defend the perimeter more. I mean, they have no option but to do that. They've given up four three-pointers as it is. 
here at the line. First one goes. That's Claudel Harris, the freshman at the stripe. On the season, 71%. Trying to stretch this 11-point lead to 12, and he does. Doubling it up. Who saw this coming? A lot of confidence from Charleston Southern right here. Team trying to string together back-to-back -to -back victories after a win on the road at Tarleton State. Get some momentum ahead of conference play, as that's just really pretty from Boyd. That is, and for CSU, you're going to live with that shot because it's not a very high percentage shot, uh, but just a better make right there from Boyd. Long two, so the lead is 10. Twirling inside, a little bit short out of the hand of Harris that time. It's a good look by Harris. Boyd's open. He just can't dial it in from deep. Offensive rebound, and that time it does go. That's Odawan over Sheck Fay. Sheck Fay had the box out, but couldn't keep his man down. And Barclay Radabaugh asking for it over the back, but nothing from the officials. Fay over the defense, strokes it home. Now with more on the three-point shooting taking place on the four for us is Anna Whitty. Payne, you mentioned Charleston Southern shooting right now. After the Kennesaw State loss, Charleston Southern changed up their offensive scheme. Coach Radenbaugh didn't allow them to take those mid-range shots. They're only allowed to hit layups or the three-point shot. And that's really freed up this Buccaneers team to share the ball more. It's the exact same way that Alabama plays. And right now, Charleston Southern is shooting 44% from the field. And right what now, about it's Sheck Fee shooting the ball well from the field as he knocks down another tough shot. The answer, and that goes, it's Kasim Nicholson. There we go. It's finally heated up inside the buck dome. We got some buckets falling. Right back at you, Talik Chavez from deep. An offensive explosion from CSU right now. In need of some offense, the Tigers. Cooper weaving inside. Extra pass to Johal. A lot of contact there as Cooper got up underneath Chavez. And that does take us to the under eight media timeout. It's CSU really cooking from deep. Heating everything up on this December evening. On to the roof of our specialized facility right across the street. We are proud to serve as team physicians for the sport teams here at Charleston Southern. Right now, it is Tennessee State that's in pain. As it is the Bucks up double figures. Just about seven minutes left to play here in the first half. Uh, it's really the Bucks dominating down low 16 to 9 the rebound discrepancy and then we haven't even gotten into the shooting yet the Bucks with five three-pointers already here in this game they're out shooting the Tigers by 12 percent nearly 50 percent for CSU so they've gotten hotter and hotter with we've got Sheck Fay already with six points of this game he and uh, I believe it's Talik Shafez leading all scores and I believe the story so far as ball whips over to Chavez is three is worth more than two. It's been an aerial display from CSU as now they'll get a chance at three from the free throw line. Foul called there as Claude L. Harris is bumped in the shooting motion. Yeah, and it's not just from one guy. You've got D.D. Buskey who's made a three. You've got Talik Chavez who's knocked down a couple in Jaquavian Florence. Didn't mention his name. He's got six points as well, so... We're seeing it from a couple of different guys. And now we've got Claude L. Harris shooting three free throws. How about that? Take another look here. And just went right into the landing spot that time, did Kasim Nicholson. And Harris, the freshman, has been playing himself more and more on, into minutes on the court. Last one rims out. Offensive rebound. Chavez 
Yes, a five-point possession <laughs> for the Buccaneers. My goodness, how often do you see that? Stretching the lead out to 17 points, and the Bucs bench absolutely erupts. 36 to 19, and Evan, you said it earlier, none of us saw this coming, but it's been beautiful offense and great defense from CSU. Well, it's a long game, a tale of two tab halves, but the way that CSU is playing right now, you have to be pleased if your head coach Barclay rated ball, especially after the last time they were on this court, a loss to Jacksonville just a couple of weeks ago. This looks like night and day, a different team. Cooper earns a trip to the line, or rather that foul called on the floor. Extra possession for Tennessee State. And only CSU's 14th foul of the half, so they're playing really clean defense. Brown turns down a three, offs for a floater, and it was the right choice. And you can't miss Brown on those highlighter shoes. Huh? He draws plenty of attention from the defense, not only for his play, but also for his shoe game. Well, he brought the green, Evan. You brought the red with that jacket as we are well within the holiday season. Bowser can't season. tap it back in. Tis the season. Absolutely. Extra pass. Boyd, let's see if he can hit this time. Yes, he can. Sweet string music for the team from the Music City. The lead is back to 12. Oh, what a line there. Tedrick Boyd, what a shot from him as well. He's got... Seven points, four rebounds. He's the go-to guy for the Tigers so far. He's hit a ton of them this year, around 47% from deep. He'll be top 25 nationally in percentages. That shot may have been blocked on the way through. Brown hits the deck. Boyd gets the ball back, but he's only shooting about 2.3 three threes per game. This time... Wow. Charges on Harris. in to Talik Chavez. <laughs> Gladell Harris looked like a bit of a flop. I'd like to see that again, but hey, it worked on the officials. This guy made the most of it as we get another look here. We do get another look here as he was sliding, but I think he had guarding position there. Looked like Boyd kind of loaded up. You lower the shoulder, you get trucked, you get called for it. It's a nice play there from Claude L. Harris. Inside for Bowser. Brown scrapping for it, wins it away. <laughs> Gathers himself, gets it up. Won't go, but strong and persistent effort from Shakem Johnson gets the two. And Brown is hurt. It looks like he rolled his ankle. Well, you'd never want to see that. There's not a lot of space here on the baseline between the bleachers and the quarter play. It's Christian Brown reaching at his lower body and trying to find a way to get up. Went right into our camera guy there on the baseline. And he actually fell into the bleachers. So he had a seat, but you can tell Brown in some pain there. A great steal athletic play from him. Good to see him back on his feet, hobbling off the court. So Brown is able to hobble off with the assistance of some trainers. Take a look at what's been going right for the Buccaneers. And there's been plenty of it. Dee Dee Buskey in the corner. Got Jaquavian Florence, who's made more than a couple of threes. And then Sheck Bay picking up where he's left off with his hot shooting. It's been the difference in this game so far. 36 points already. As Brown gets tended to, we'll send it to Anna Woody. Before the game, Coach Radabaugh said that the biggest improvement needs to be shooting the three, especially from his guards. This week, they shot a ton in practice, and he said that's one of the reasons why they brought in players like Chuck Fay and Talik Chavez is to hit those three points. Before the game, they were shooting 26%. Now they are 40% from beyond the arc, and Chavez is three of six. 
Well, Evan, that's a great point by Anna, and we see what this team can be capable of offensively, the position to play on the floor when they do hit shots from deep. Well, and especially while playing at home. I mean, look at this glorious gym that we're in right now. I mean, it is the Buck Dome. It's iconic. It's <laughs> extremely small, but it's extremely loud. It's got a unique home court advantage to it as Claudel Harris trying to pick up where he's left off, but unable to knock that three down. Here comes Cooper. Florio dribble moves and now gives way to Johnson, gets it back. Oh, Tennessee State on a 7 nothing run right now, so. Dupree spotting up. Faye goes high for the board. Trying to extend the lead ahead of halftime. Chavez, this guy's unconscious. I mean, Chavez, we all know what he's capable of. Come on, he played for Rick Patino last year. Rick Patino, for crying out loud, <laughs> one of the best coaches in the history of college basketball, albeit maybe one of the most controversial coaches too, but that's neither here nor there. Talik Chavez has been coached up quite a bit, and this year, using his last year of eligibility in North Charleston, South Carolina, gracing us with his presence as back is Cooper, knocking down a three with the answer. Big shot from Cooper, lead back to 10. And plenty of offensive fireworks here on display. You gotta love it. Absolutely. How could you not? Everybody loves buckets. We're getting plenty of them. Knox swirling around. And that shot is blocked this time. But it looks like Cooper, as he got a piece of it, may have been out of bounds. The ball will stay here. Shot clock resets. And this dead ball takes us to the under four-minute timeout. So CSU with a 10-point lead looking to build off it with the ball back after the break. And we all know Hercules Tires is the official tire of the Big South Conference. It's been a Herculean-sized three-point shooting effort from CSU, well up over 40% as they've built 39 points of offense. They can't hit here, though. It is TSU that will come away with it. Oh, hey, the season of giving. CSU giving their fans quite an offensive display here in this first half. Tennessee Southerns trying to drum up some momentum ahead of halftime. Not there, though. Faye, a little stop and start. Faye, a very much rhythmic shooter. I mean, this guy can have a hand in his face, and it's a high percentage shot. I'm surprised he passed it up there with the way he's been putting them in tonight. He only got ripped away by Dewana. Can't quite corral it. The possession stays alive for the Bucks. 14 on the shot clock. Harris out of a double team. Knox shifty, nearly lost his balance, and he did in an extra step. It's a travel. Yeah, Knox has that spin move in his arsenal. I'm afraid he goes to it a little too soon there. Picks up his feet. Tennessee State's still got some time to chip away here at this deficit. Big well, two minutes coming up. And down by 17. It was 36 to 19, and they've cut into that lead. Cooper trying to cut a little further. That won't fall. Harris right in the defense, finds Kelly. Kelly got the angle and dropped it in. Freshman to freshman. This is the future right here. Mm. This two-man game. Claude L. Harris to Tasha Kelly. There's something sweet about it. Something new. A lot to like. Yeah. 
Joe Howell. Nice pass to Wana. Oh. It's a facial and one. Jeez. That Get is... out of the way. Jeez, Dewana living up to that number 23 on his jersey. That's absolutely just a king size. Mm. What? Right there. Two-handed jam. Get yourself on a poster, Shaq Fay. It's all right, man. Happens to the best of us. Something every single hooper can resonate with. Just inevitable at a certain point. I mean, if you play enough, and you certainly want to play. You'd rather be on a poster than on a bench, right? Absolutely. As to wanna making a claim for a little bit more play time. Got the start here tonight, and he's been pretty solid both ways. And listed at six foot eight, but nothing about him looks six eight. He couldn't complete the three point play. But Claudel Harris couldn't hang on. Possession turns back to Tennessee State. Another turnover for CSU. We well, were just talking about those freshmen. Those two freshmen playing the offensive game on the other end, but fighting over the rebound when there are absolutely zero Tigers within distance. It's just a freshman mistake. Dewana, whole crowd of Buccaneers around him. He lost the handle. Claudel Harris, swiper, no swiping right there. He just <laughs> takes it out of the pocket. <laughs> uh, Tasha Kelly can't get it to go. Johnson directing traffic. <laughs> it's a charge. That's three turnovers forced by Claude L. Harris in this first half. I mean, we talk about his offensive game, but his defense, I mean, this guy just puts his body on the line. You know what it feels like to take a charge like that? There are a lot of Division I players who are too afraid mm -hmm. to put their body out there like that. That is outstanding. Well, it's one of those things for a freshman, if you want to play, that's a good way to get more PT. That's it, that knocked down some shots. He's been good both on offense and defense. CSU is looking to cap off an excellent half of play. Here is Harris. Got a lane, and Dewana saw to it that it closed quickly. Nicholson looked like he may have taken an extra step, but Fitzgerald can't notch a three there. Nicholson. Yes, sir. What a big bucket right there. With Barclay Radebaugh wants to talk about these last 11 seconds with his team. Tennessee State slimming down a 17-point deficit to seven. Much yep. more manageable. Don't look now, but it's becoming a much closer game ahead of halftime. CSU ha had all four timeouts. They're going to take one here. Talk this over. Evan, what are you looking for? for the final shot of the half. Well, you just go back to this one right here. It's led to a couple of offensive rebounds from Tennessee State, but for Charleston Southern, ideally, you'd like to get a look from outside, um, but the Tigers have stepped up on their perimeter defense, which has led to the lanes being wide open. So if you don't get the look you want, give it to Harris, give it to Chavez, make something happen, have these guards Drive it down low. Maybe it's Emory Knox putting him back in the spin cycle with this spin move that he has. Four seconds. Knox gets it up. Won't fall. TSU's not going to get a shot off. It was all Charleston Southern for most of this half. But Tennessee State able to make a little bit of a dent before the halftime break. We're going to hear from Coach Barclay Radabaugh here in a moment. But Evan, any thoughts on that half of play? Well, just an absolutely surprisingly hot start from CSU and then just the resolve from Tennessee State to not give in. Whenever you're down 17 points on the road, I think we've got a great setup here to the second half. Now we'll head to Anna with a member of the CSU coaching staff. 
coach Talit Chavez is doing what you brought him in to do. He's shooting really well, four of eight from the three-point line. How is he finding himself open to hit those shots? Well, first of all, we think he been, has been getting those shots the past few games. He just hasn't knocked them down. Uh, we've been in the gym a lot lately. We're on break, so he's got some more free time on his hands, and he's really been working on making those shots, and we're, we're good with the first half so far. So hopefully he can do it again in the second. The nine points in the paint was a big emphasis. The Tigers are beating you 12 to 10. How do you push them out and really deny those shots under the basket? Yeah, first we got to box out and keep them off the offensive glass. They're getting some easy ones in transition. We, we really struggled the, the last four minutes of that half. we got to be better than that. We had a big lead. We can't let them creep back in and make it a game. They play off of their energy, and when they get going, they're pretty good. So we gotta we got to limit that in the second half and, and see what we can do. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, guys. As we head to halftime, it's 41-34 to 34 here on the campus of Charleston Southern. Talese Chavez leading the way for CSU as we head to halftime. It's halftime. This game is brought to you by Ingles. Low prices, but not low on offense, Evan, here in this one as CSU has the lead 41 to 34. Yeah, both teams shooting nearly 40% from the field. Uh, five three-pointers for Tennessee State, seven for Charleston Southern. So only a six-point discrepancy there, but a seven-point discrepancy on the scoreboard. Right now, it's really CSU out-rebounding Tennessee State 22 to 19 as we get a look at some of these highlights. Talik Chavez, the Iona transfer with 12 points. He's been outstanding in this one. Absolutely, Evan, but then it was Dupree on the inside for Tennessee State. Answering back, though, CSU as Knox picked the pocket. Got a pretty two on the other end. Two is less than three, though. Busky makes that one. TSU is able to string together a couple bucks back into it. It was TSU in there in half number one. Offense and defense, they got a couple fast break points. Well, it feels like CSU should be absolutely dominating this game. So the fact that it's only a seven point lead really goes to show about the fight and the absolute sheer dominance that TSU has inside. Uh, their post players making a big difference in this one. Dowana's stat sheet's not gonna pop out at you, but he's had quite a half. We'll see what he can do in the second half. We've got nine minutes left before the second half tips off, but first we got a break. We'll be back. It's the Big South, where winners are made. Rejoining you from the Buck Dome, where it is 41 to 34 CSU at the break. And a reminder, Big South basketball fans, six exciting days in March will see us go from 24 men's and women's programs at the start to two champions at the finish. All in one venue is the 2022 Hercules Tires Big South Basketball Championships at Charlotte's Bojangles Coliseum. I don't know, Evan, maybe a decent Christmas gift there. No doubt about that, man. I mean, with the way CSU's playing tonight, you gotta think they might just be in that tournament. That's what the hope is. Let's geek out over some stats for a minute. Looking pretty much identical just at the surface level here. Of course, CSU shooting it a little bit better, but the ball's starting to dry up from outside there at the end of the second half for the Buccaneers. TSU, a high pressure, very physical team. Important number there at the bottom of your screen. Only eight turnovers for CSU, and most of them coming in the first five minutes. That's it, so they started cleaning it up more, knocked some shots down, but last four or five minutes of the half, like assistant coach T. Butters told Anna Witte in that post-game uh, interview, he said the team just didn't play all that well. They let TSU back into this ball game, setting up an exciting second half. That second half is approaching shortly as again, CSU has that advantage. It'd be a really big non-conference win for them to get some confidence ahead of conference play. 
here in this non-conference matchup between Charleston Southern and Tennessee State. This broadcast is brought to you by Sunbell Rentals. We have the equipment for that, and we have Evan West in a red jacket and TSU having to make up some ground in that second half. Yeah, for TSU, I mean, it really comes down to Emmanuel Dewana. He's been the big man down there for them. Mm. Hadn't had much of an impact on the game on the offensive side of the floor. We've seen him on defense with a couple of big stops. If he can put the ball in the basket a little bit more, I like TSU's chances in this one. Well... Our own Anna Whitty caught up with the man that's tasked with trying to get his team back into the game, Coach Penny Collins. Anna? Evan, for the record, I like your red jacket as well. I just hope it doesn't mean you're an Ohio State fan. But Coach <laughs> Collins coming out of the locker room said, coming back in transition, they need to get back faster. Charleston Southern had seven points in fast breaks. And when it comes to Charleston Southern's great shooting, 38% from the three-point line, he said they just need to get in front of them, contest them, and really go for the second balls. Well, Anna, that's an area of the game that CSU certainly thrived in, those extra effort points, offensive rebounds, fast breaks against Carlton State, and they saw them get their first road win of the year. That's it. So they're going to have to battle back, but the way that they play the last five minutes of the half, if they can carry that into this half, then you got to think we're in for it. And for the record, Anna, I'm not an Ohio State fan. Absolutely not. Well, with that, the second half is underway. Here's Cooper, a couple three and six teams trying to get a step closer to 500 as DeWana looked for the flots, this time turned away. Rejected by Bowser and then coming back, Sean Price losing it, giving the ball right back to TSU. So a couple of turnovers to start this one. DeWana. Got his man in the air, got to the rack, short-armed it. Rebound controlled by the Tigers. Fitzgerald from the charity stripe. Yes, sir. But we're talking about Dewana and him touching the ball more in the second half. He had the first two shot attempts for the Tigers, so looks like Coach Collins trying to feed him down low. If he can just start putting him in there, we'd have a different ball game. Five-point game as it stands. Price. Back to the basket, drops it in. Such Big a answer. Crafty, crafty guard, Sean Price is. I mean, so good with the off balance, awkward looking shots that you wouldn't normally want a guy taking, but the guy makes them. That kind of Kyle Lowry, Villanova guard, old man's game as Boyd brings a splash of the new school of three. There you go, Boyd. Pick it up where he left off in that first half couple of threes here. Moore rattles out an answer. Chance to make it a one possession game with a bucket for TSU. Boyd calling for the screen. You know what he's doing. Just a little bit short there, but he's certainly finding the confidence. Well, and now for CSU, the answer needs to come from their guards. We need to see the aggressive play that they started this game with and the green light that they had from outside. Bowser looping around. Busky, I should say. Bowser can't collect the offensive rebound. TSU gets it back. And Look at Busky trying to face up against Nicholson. Nicholson got a lane and got a roll. Already down to and Barclay Radeball has seen enough. Timeout taken on the floor. And what do you think Barclay Radeball is saying in this huddle? Saying they need to start hitting some shots and getting stops. Well, stoppage on the floor for us means we will step aside. A word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Where winners are made. Welcome back to the Buck Dome, where the Buccaneers lead the Tigers 43-41. to Head coach for the Tigers, Brian Collins, has a nickname, Penny. He said that some people get the story wrong, but the real story is he was in fifth grade and he always wore a Penny Hardaway jersey when he was playing basketball. There were a lot of kids in his neighborhood named Brian, so everyone just started calling him Penny, and the rest is history. That's great insight, Anna. As he's done a great job coaching this Tennessee State team this year. A lot of new faces. They've been highly competitive. He's certainly one of the bright young coaches in the sport at only 37 years old. 
Yeah, one of the youngest coaches in Division I basketball. And you talk about just the fight and resolve that his team has showed, cutting a 17-point lead down to just two, although Dalik Chavez extending that to five. Mm -hmm. And uh, even more impressive that they have cut this lead down. They've done it without Christian Brown, the transfer from Georgia. He's out for the second half after that awkward tumble he had at the bottom of a basket at the end of a fast break in the first half. So they will be without Christian Brown here for the last 17 minutes of this one. Well, Penny Hardaway had this to say about Penny Collins when he was hired at TSU four years ago. He said, I'm very confident that he'll be able to get the players in there to win at Tennessee State. He's more than prepared for the job, and he will be successful. His team looking for some success right now on the offensive end. They won't find it. Here's Bosky! My goodness! Bosky with the right hand thunder. This Look is out. Sports Center, baby. Bosky. Put him on the top ten plays. Whoa. Makes the hand, the hair on the back of your neck stand up. As Cooper gets to work. That's a big time throw show. They're still on their feet. Forget the live action. I want to see the dang replay as Tennessee State with the answer on the layup. But wow. They both count for two points, but one's certainly more impressive than the other. And now I think it might be time for that replay. Man, I mean, you're just talking about taking flight. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's got to have a 46-inch vertical. Ooh. Remember when you could jump like that? No, I do not. <laughs> Me neither. They'll be talking about that one for a while. And you get the sense that that might be on your nightly sports center. Certainly worthy, that's for sure. Pick and roll action. Out to Chavez. Almost got the shooter's roll. A little bit of a battle underneath. Teddy Valentine's going to put himself in the center of it. Foul call. As he usually does, TV <laughs> Teddy Valentine from Charleston, South Carolina, but one of the more notorious referees in college basketball. I saw him on ESPN on Monday night. Seen him on ESPN Plus this evening as CSU can't do anything with that possession. Lead still at five. Cooper, will... strong take. Had it plucked away from him. Here's Chavez. And he lost it. Racing the other way, the Tigers. Cooper. That won't fall. And Faye with a strong board. It's a fast-paced game right now. Both teams... It's going back and forth, a little out of control. But I will say this, after the busky flush, he's not going to care about it if his team doesn't get the win tonight. They fouled there as we are at the under-16 media timeout. CSU in the huddle. They're still talking about that busky dunk from a couple moments ago back here inside the Buck Dome in a moment. Slow motion, obviously. Because authentic ingredients make a sub above. This is right around the time we usually remind you and everyone at home how Pepsi knows what fans like. But we all know fans would just like to be here, and they are here. Class is out. Several Tennessee State fans have made the trip down, and we got the youngins out in action. Well, they've got a couple of South Carolina players on this Tennessee State team. Of course, the big one, Christian Brown out of Hopkins, South Carolina. Rolled out for the rest of this one after an awkward fall. But you love to see the support. I know it's only going to drum back up as students check back into campus after the holiday break. Jaquavian Florence will toss it in from right in front of our vantage here inside the Buck Dome. So only a five-point lead, though after that dunk from Buskey a couple of moments ago, it kind of feels a little bit bigger than that. CSU looking to add to the advantage. That's it, and Talik Chavez with the hot hand still pulling him. Can't knock this one down. He's got 15 points, couldn't hit there. Chance to make it a one-possession game again for Penny Collins' crew. 
such a pivotal moment in the game the next seven minutes. Oh, put back dunk. It's Johnson meeting at the rim. Man, it's those big men for TSU keeping his team in the game. A little bit of a dunk contest breaking out here in the low country. Claudio Harris, a little hesitation move, absorbs the contact, can't finish. Oh. And he wanted a call, but just good defense right there from Tennessee State with a chance to tie the game. Extra pass, Cooper is open, can't connect. Faye may have gotten swiped across the face. Bucks looking to regain some comfort. Chavez this time on the inside, a kiss off the glass. Silky smooth to Lake Chavez. That's 17 for him. Nicholson, feathery touch with the right hand. That's it, I'm telling you, Kasim Nicholson. CSU looking to make a platoon of changes. The next opportunity. Chavez, he's cooking. Defers to Harris. Joe Howell right up on top of him. Shot clock at 12. Kelly gets up inside, and he uses all 250 pounds to carve out an angle for the deuce. I know, he just... Flipped him around for the reverse right layup. I want to see more from Tajay Kelly in those post moves. Been very strong tonight, the freshman. Boyd gets free. 4-3, yes. Dedrick Boyd. A transfer from Eastern Kentucky and Illinois State. One of those guys who was on his third program. He was actually... Nicknamed the microwave by Coach Collins. Penny Collins. Collins. As Faye can't notch that one. Karen down to play. And it looks like it's going to go to Tennessee State. Beg your pardon, actually, it is the Buccaneers who hang on to it. CSU certainly feeling some heat, seeing a 17-point lead shrink down to just two. Price fighting for it. Couldn't keep it alive. So Tennessee State with the chance to tie or take the lead with a bucket. And they have not led this entire game so far, nearly 28 minutes. Been wire to wire so far for CSU. Maybe not anymore, Fitzgerald touched every part of the rim before popping out. In and out right there. A lot of hand fighting down low, and the whistle comes. That's Dewana getting a little handsy with Sedarius Bowser. And that's his third foul. That's big. Certainly something to keep an eye on as Dewana allowed to continue, at least for now. Penny Collins showing trust in the Purdue transfer. And if I'm CSU, I'm going right at him because you want to get this guy out of the ball game. Moore came off the screen and nailed one from outside. Big three. And Jameer Moore coming right in the game, finding his way in the box score. Lead back up to five. Good ball movement here. Little fade away jumper. And that is just straight silk. It's the microwave telling you he's popping like popcorn right now. I don't know what else microwaves quickly, but Dedrick Boyd certainly does. All right, Lane Kiffin, here's more. Oh. 
And it's more raindrops from outside, back-to-back -back threes for Jameer Moore. The lead is six. I'll tell you what, we got a microwave on both ends. Plenty of appliances in here. Oh, look out! Two-handed flush, Shaquem Johnson. Shaquem with this second. Nice play of this second half. I mean, we saw him miss a dunk in the first half, so you know he's out for blood now. He wants redemption. That's still on his mind. Buskey. Price, a take. And the putback. It's Sedarius with the soft touch by the rim. This is a guy who's not going to fill up the stat sheet or be an imposing presence on the offensive end. But, I mean, whenever it comes to just being around the rim, you can count on Sedarius Bowser. What a game we've got breaking out. Diedrich Boyd. What do you know? Another three. And the lead is back down to three. The Tigers, tooth and nail, staying in this one. Well, this is the Dedrick Boyd show here in the second half. Dedrick Boyd exploding 15 points as we step aside. <laughs> variety of officially licensed merchandise in conference and school branded items at BigSouthStore.com. Grow up with some new apparel or find that perfect gift. Well, we've been gifted a game that's been a highlight reel, Evan. Plenty of dunks, plenty of threes. It's really just a beautiful crystallization what the modern game is. No doubt in this second half, it's Dedrick Boyd from Tennessee State single-handedly keeping his team in this ball game. Kelly hit hard on the way up as Buskey found him with an opening. He'll go to the line for free throws. It's been a pretty clean half of basketball and really a game all together as we take another look. It's just a beautiful feed from Buskey. And Nicholson with the smart foul there coming in from behind. Kelly has that rattle out on him. We'll send it to Anna with a word from head coach Barclay Radabaugh. In that last timeout, Coach Radabaugh was very passionate about telling every single player that it's a personal challenge to defend Diedrich Boyd. He, Boyd has 18 points right now, and whenever they're going up to defend him, he wants them to get their hands in his face, and when he scores, he wants his team to be mad about it. He's got 18. He's scored the last couple for Tennessee State. He's also got seven rebounds, one off his career high. Boyd again, oh. unbelievable. He nails it from deep, and it's a one-point game. Diedrich Boyd with 21, right back at you, Buskey, and it won't fall. Boyd you. gets that career-high eighth board. They better find him again. That's all I got to say. Feed the hot hand. Tigers looking for the lead. Oh, Boyd. Never in doubt, another three. And this man is exploding in front of our very eyes as Boyd has 24 and the Tigers have their first advantage. Did you just see the jab step he did to create that separation? Knocks a rebuttal. That lead didn't last very long. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like Emory Knox just heard what I said. A little shimmy shake to back the defender up and then he's stepping back and knocking it down do not blink back and forth we go and you have to imagine this ball will end up with Boyd at some point Dewana had it poked away from him so if you're Barclay Radabaugh how much are you keying your defense in on number 20 in blue right now well, at this point he's beating your best defender Deontay Buskey at will. So maybe you throw him a couple doubles. They deny him the ball there. Six on the shot clock. Reversal, Fitzgerald. Cooper. He has struggled from deep. Strong rebound, Dewana. And he is fouled. I'm telling you, Dewana will be the X factor for Tennessee State this season. He is so long. 
personal. Only style. six foot eight, but this guy's got a seven plus foot wingspan. I mean, he jumps over everyone, and his arms are the first to touch the ball always. The one of missed one from the line earlier, but coming in 72.7% from the charity strike. Makes the first tie game. Incredible comeback from Tennessee State in this one. Trailed win by as many as 17 in the first period. And then win or lose, I think Penny Collins has learned a lot about his team tonight, and he's liking what he's learning. Second one falls, lead back to Tennessee State. And it's a couple teams here that are three and six coming in, but we see when they play their best as they have tonight what they're capable of. That's it. And I think you've got an even playing field. Two teams who are younger and who could potentially be on the right path. Oh, we got a wedgie. <laughs> it was Kelly rejected on his way up. May have been some contact down below. We'll see if this is a foul or a jump ball. And it looks like it's going to be a jump. Clean block from Nicholson. He pinned it right in the crook of the rim in the backboard. Telling you, Tennessee State with all their length down low. It's been the X factor. And TV Teddy getting in the middle of both guys <laughs> right here. Possession arrow keeps it with the Buccaneers. <laughs> Look at this. He's back again. We've got. TV Teddy telling them, Tennessee State, you're the Tigers, or are you the Tattletailers? I don't know. <laughs> Nicholson had it, lost it, gets it back. Here's Boyd. <laughs> and everything's falling for Diedrich Boyd. Gets the roll there. All you do is just keep feeding them. Feed them, feed them, feed them. Here comes a whistle. And they're going to get to Wana. That's his fourth. Well, we will step aside. It is the road team, Tennessee State, up 67 60. Well, you're pretty thirsty. It's been high flying as we sit at 67 64, Tennessee State over CSU. Coming out of the under eight media timeout. Again, Peyton Gallagher and Evan West. We'll hear from the third member of our team, Anna Witte, here in a moment as Bowser's at the line. He makes the front end of the one and one. Anna? Diedrich Boyd certainly has the hot hand tonight. He hit a season high of 24 points. His career high is 31 when he was a freshman at Eastern Kentucky. He is the player that Charleston Southern has to stop here today. And also, he got his first start this season for this team. It's certainly a great player who's had a great performance so far. Guy who started at EKU in the OVC, then went to Illinois State, found his way to play for Penny Collins here in Nashville for the Blue and Red. Yeah, six of 12 from behind the arc, so he's the last guy you want to touch the ball on offense right now. Nicholson takes his turn and finds the range just inside the stripe, lead back to three. Very nice advantage, 69 to 66. Chavez trying to equalize. Rattles out. Well, he had the separation that he needed, but it was just out of rhythm for him. Really all comes down to defense for Charleston Southern at this point, getting some stops. Foul called. Starting to get a little bit more physical. Yeah, well, you're expecting that as both teams are tired and playing a long game. They're going to get a little sloppy with their defense. We saw some pushing and shoving between Sheck Fay and Nicholson there, and Sheck unfortunately got the call. But you see how frustrated Nicholson is. Bucks looking to D up. Back to Cooper. He's doubled. Nicholson hoist one. Too strong. Here comes Busky in transition. We know what he can do. Hesitate. Holds and hits. Wow. We need more of that from D.D. Buskey. We need him 
attacking the basket like a rhino because every time something special happens. Deontay Buskey, just under 10 points per game on the season, starting to make an impact. Boyd, this time the defense good enough to force a miss as Buskey had his hand up. Buskey and Tyre take the lead. Look at the floor spacing right now for Charleston Southern. Just beautiful. Sean Price going to get an opportunity to retake the lead for Charleston Southern. See if that is called a shooting foul or not. <laughs> get another look. He in the motion to you? Pretty sure he is, and the refs agree. They're going to give him two points, or two shot attempts, I should say. 68.8% free throw shooter. One of the funnier releases you'll see at the free throw line. Moore comes in, gets Faye for Barclay Radabaugh as Price has a chance to tie with this free throw. No good, 0 for 2 trip. You gotta have a short term memory there. Sean Price, he's still upset about it. He needs to let it go. Under six minutes to play. Cooper getting to work. Another whistle. We remarked earlier in the game how clean it had been, but a lot of foul calls here down the stretch. It's getting physical. It's getting chippy. You love to see just the competitive fire coming out of each team as we've got a one-possession game with Letson. Six minutes to play. This is what college basketball is all about. Then Kasim Nicholson, that's been sparking up offense for Tennessee State as of late, but he's on the bench. So is Boyd. Oh, this, this time an offensive foul. <laughs> and with Boyd out of the game, Charleston Southern needs to capitalize. I mean, you have a guy who's made 26 points tonight. Been unconscious here in the second half. We just saw TV Teddy getting a little TV time courtesy of our director, Nick Case. Gotta love some TV Teddy on your TV on a Thursday. But also love this offensive display we're seeing. Not loving the turnovers though. Chavez made the right pass. Kelly just wasn't ready for it. Chavez has been quiet here in the second half after a huge first half of offensive output. Yeah, 12 first half points there. It was shooting the ball exceptionally well for Charleston Southern. Uh, here in the second half, he's dried up some 17 points. So still 5 of 11 from beyond the arc. So you don't want him to keep shooting by any means. Still holding at 69-68. Moore may have something to say about that. Turns out the man with words is Shaquem Johnson as he pins it on the backboard. <laughs> Shaquem Johnson just falling into the photographer there. Everyone's okay, fortunately. Looks like the camera's fine, too. Joe Howell into a crowd, and it caromed off Tajay Kelly. Fighting words, though, from Shaquem Johnson. A nasty block. Another look. Was this ball off mm. the backboard? Tough to tell there. We'd have to slow it down more if it was offensive goaltending or not, but the refs didn't see it that way. Lead still at one for the Tigers. Joe Howell just got to get one up, and it never hit the rim. And there it is. Shot clock violation. Impressive defense from Tajay Kelly. Joe Hall had the mismatch, the bigger man on him. Go right at him. Go past him. But Tajay Kelly staying in front of Joe Hall, forcing the turnover. Boyd and Nicholson still on the bench. Here's Moore, may have gotten hit on the shot. No foul call that time though. No, and Moore's been a spark plug off the bench, knocking down a pair of threes in the first half. He hadn't had as much luck here in the second half as a TSU fan, not liking that call. I don't know why. Up, 
pass too tall there over the head of Dupree. That gives an opportunity for Dewana, Boyd, and Nicholson to come back in. dewana has got those four fouls. You could call them the big three for Tennessee State tonight just based off of how they played and the impact that they've made, particularly Diedrich Boyd. Certainly the A team as this is a starting five back out on the floor. Fado Harris, now Busky inside. Kelly rooted out that time. Kelly inside, couldn't finish the first time, but stuck with it. And the Bucs have the lead back. Wow, you talk about quick hands there. I mean, that ball looked like it was barely out of the cylinder as Barclay Radeball is begging, absolutely begging for a little fanfare here. Here's Cooper. Wipe off the shot attempt. Foul on the floor. They're going to get Chavez, and they're going to get us to the under four media timeout. It's Charleston Southern in a good one, up 70 to 69 over Tennessee News results and stats and much more. Enjoy a video feature showcasing remarkable student athletes, connect to school sites or social media outlets all from one place. Might be able to see that Deontay Buskey dunk from earlier on the site later this evening or maybe on SportsCenter as Cooper gets going towards the rim. Good contest. And somehow that said that it did not touch Sheck Fay last. Can't believe that. Well, Sheck Fay threw his hands up like he knew he didn't touch it. And Teddy Valentine with an always convincing call gives Coach Cowlins a little love tap on the butt there. Says, hey, we all could coach. So the Bucks leading by one, could be four. Buskey left it a little short. But it will stay here as Nicholson couldn't control it. I'll tell you what, Sheck Fay is clearly under Nichols' skin. And he likes it. I mean, Fay's enjoying himself out there. Nichols is a very emotional player. He's wearing his feelings on his sleeve. You got to stay composed down the stretch here. And in this half, TSU has been very composed. The Tigers are shooting more than 50% from the field here in the second half. Beautiful pick and roll. Bowser punctuates. The lead is three. Oh, Odulana got lost on defense. He did not know where Sedarius Bowser was. Under three to play, a three-point lead. The CSU fans on their feet. Pick and roll perfection as CSU digs in. I'm curious where Diedrich Boyd is. Why has he not shot the basketball? Sitting on the back side right now. Guarded by Claude Harris, Fitzgerald, heat check, and he is hot. Stroking it, I'm telling you. He's got the shorts like Larry Bird, like Michael Jordan in the 80s. I mean, those things are riding the thighs, but hey, the basketball falling from the skies. Come on, Fitzgerald. Those five-inch inseamers. 72 to 72. Boy, do we have a game. Chavez, Harris, bottoms. Laudel, the freshman from Louisiana, can I get a Cele Bonton Roule? Punch, counter punch, 75 to 72. There we go. The CSU fans into it here. We've got maybe 200 strong, and we're hearing from them. Boyd trying to get the ball. CSU will deny him that time. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Fitzgerald sizing up a drive. Oh. He is blocked hard to one of the follow, yes. <laughs> Fitzgerald got double blocked, if that's even a thing. He is all right. He took a hard fall, but Dewana with the heads up play there to get the two. I'd like to see that again, though. Man, was that a rejection. There's Busky with it first, and he was about to meet Harris, if Busky hadn't gotten a piece of that first. Great awareness from Dewana there, not only to stay with the play, but to know how much time was left on the shot clock and apply the touch needed to get that to go. So Tennessee State taking a big timeout here as CSU will have possession when the game resumes. 
you got to think, with all this time, CSU, I don't, I don't think they're looking to milk this clock, per se. I think they just want to get a high percentage shot. And the way that their offense has ran here in these last four minutes has been solid. I mean, they've started to regain a little bit of that magic that they had in the first half whenever they opened up that 17-point lead. But it really has been the classic tale of two halves. Tennessee State falling behind early, making a run those last four minutes of the first half only to erase that 17-point deficit here in the second half, all because of one guy. Well, they rode Boyd, as you mentioned, all the way back in, and this has been one of those games where neither team is gonna give an inch. So we head down towards the conclusion, and Evan, for CSU and TSU, what is exactly on the line here as we head towards the end? Well, we've got identical records, so just ending the obvious, a fourth win on the season, but so much more chemistry and a confidence builder as we inch closer towards conference play starting just next month in a couple of weeks. Stating the obvious, this is the kind of game you love to win and hate to lose as Faye navigates out of the trap, then loses it. And Cooper, the Euro, <laughs> yeah! What a turn of events. CSU wondering where that foul was when Shekfei turned the ball over. Pendulum swings back to Tennessee State, as this is a pretty move from Cooper. Under a minute. Bucks trail by one. Buskey picks up his dribble. Couldn't slip it in there for Bowser. Kept it alive. And the finger points to the Tigers. Buskey is down. And he's in real pain, too. I'm not sure if, if it's a groin injury or what, but he looks like he's grabbing his hip. He fought hard trying to keep that one in play. Being intended to now. Clearly in a lot of pain. There's a scrum with bodies on bodies as we just see the replay here. Cooper, his hands in the middle. Mm -mm. Looks like he just landed funny on that left hip. Putting it all on the line. Didn't really get to brace himself for the contact with the floor. He's back to his feet. It looks like the Bucks are going to have to carry on here in crunch time. Not one of their best veterans, the fifth-year senior. And here comes Sean Price in his absence. Another veteran senior. It all comes down to defense on this play. we got to thank the Tigers. Going to work it down here for Charleston Southern. Last thing you allow is a three. A little bit of token pressure. CSU does not have to foul. Price staying up on Fitzgerald, making them do something with the ball. Always going to be weary of a five-second call in these situations. Fitzgerald gets to work. High up off the glass, the lead is three. The teardrop. And perhaps the nail in the coffin for the Tigers. Charleston Southern, they started off so hot from three. They're going to have to finish that way, trailing by three points now after this lay-in from Fitzgerald. And just another look at that. Sean Price playing off of Fitzgerald, daring him to come at him, and that's exactly what he does. He goes at him and the shot blocker, Sedarius Bowser. He says, I'm not afraid. I'm coming right at you, and I'm going to make it. I'm going to close this game. So Barclay right upon right now, the man in charge will have to drop the play that gets CSU the look they need to tie this up. Who are you dialing up? Well, you got to think Shaq Faye, Talik Chavez, Jameer Moore, three of their better shooters. And then you've also got Quadell Harris, who hasn't had a great game shooting from outside, but he's also capable of knocking it down. Emery Knox has also made a three, so... You've got four capable shooters on the court right now. C 
16 ticks. Another timeout. So Penny Collins wanted to take a look, had the timeouts, figured he might as well use one. Well, it's a game of chess at this point. You've got one move, and the other team has a counter, so this is what it's all about. You gotta imagine TSU would love nothing more than to head back to Tennessee. Stunning Charleston Southern. I mean, erasing a 17-point first half deficit. It's unheard of. Well, CSU is undefeated in games in which they've outshot their opponent from deep. Right now, they lead in that column 37.5% to 36.7. They're going to have to improve that percentage just a little bit right here. I guess, of course, you could try and go for the quick two and foul. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're going to do that, though. I think you have enough time here to space the floor, get the shot that you want, but you do have plenty of time. If it's there, I suppose you take it. Ball's in. Chavez has been the best marksman for the box. He's in the near corner. Nine seconds. Faye gets it up. Just a little too long. Who's it with? They're going to take a look. Oh. I don't know which one he's looking at. Here it is. We get to look what the ref looks at. So if you're at home, you've got the inside look. Teddy Valentine wanting to be sure of who touched this. Have a big role in determining who wins the game. Oh boy, it's going to be close. What do you see, Evan West? I'd have to see it frame by frame. It looks like South of Tennessee State and Ted Ballon appears to have made the decision. He says it's white ball. Charleston Southern will get a shot here with 1.7 here on the game clock inside the gym. I realize you're looking at one second on your screen. 1.7. Barclay Radabaha will use his best play right now. Penny Collins wants to take another timeout. I'll tell you what, the last minute of a basketball game, you can bet if it's if within one possession, it's going to take 10 minutes. <laughs> CSU, they've got Faye, they've got Chavez. Those two have been their best three-point shooters. If we take a look inside the CSU huddle, both of them will be on the floor here. And if you're a Buccaneers fan tonight, you want some free basketball. This is what it all comes down to. Will we get an extra five minutes or is Charleston Southern gonna end tonight with their heads hung low? We can hear the Tennessee State crowd on their feet. And the referees with another review. They are confirming time, what we're told from our control room. Every tick matters. Absolutely, why not? These coaches getting that extra time with their team as well. Doesn't really hurt anything. At this point, CSU absolutely does need a three. So little time left on the clock. They've made 12 in the game. And Evan, this game has certainly been played at a tenor and an intensity that would be befitting of an overtime finish. Absolutely. I mean, we've had back and forth several lead changes in this game. So 
would not be out of the realm to see some free basketball tonight. Knox will throw it in. Chavez, Faye, Bowser, and Harris on the floor. Knox got to throw it in. Chavez, and that will do it. A big time comeback win for the Tigers here in the Low Country. And that is how it is. Not even a chance, not even a shot, not even a pass past the three point line for Charleston Southern. It is quite a comeback victory for Penny Collins and his team as they equal last season's win total at four games. That's absolutely fantastic. I mean, you look at the ceiling on this team, there's no telling how high it could be. The first time in three years that this program has won three consecutive games, but that is exactly what Tennessee State has accomplished. IUPUI, a win at Lipscomb, and today, a huge comeback effort to topple the Buccaneers of Charleston Southern. And really, as we the take a look at the Hercules tires, strong move of the game. It's a three ball from Boyd. And once he got going, he didn't stop. He was the engine, the microwave, if you will, that heated this team up, got him back into the game. His teammates carried him across the line at the end. Yeah. 28 points from Dietrich Boyd in this one. Just a Herculean effort. Anna Whitty has the victorious coach, Penny Collins, standing by. Coach, Diedrich Boyd had a season high of 28 points. How did he find himself open to hit those shots? Uh, the, the work he puts in every day. Uh, we, we got faith in him. We believe in him. We, we drew up a lot of plays to try to get him shots once we see he was going tonight, and he took advantage of it and made plays. You had 13 points off of turnovers. How did your team take advantage of those and get down? You know, sometimes just the look at a bounce. We tried to increase the pressure, and, we just uh, kept on applying pressure, and I was so glad we were able to get a steal late in the game. And uh, when, you, when, you, when you get into a system and get custom what you're trying to do, good things happen. The second half was huge for your team. You shot 56% from the field. How is your team as an offense able to work together and hit those shots? We're still a work in progress. Um, we got 11 new guys. We're still trying to learn each other. But we had, we had some guys step up and make some big shots tonight. And we just got to continue to stay the, stay the path and keep getting better. And the goal is to be the best version of ourselves come conference play. You have six Division One transfers on your team. You mentioned your team continuing to get better. What area specifically do you want to see get better before the next game? Uh, just chemistry. Continue to, to trust each other and love each other and, and know where the next man is going to be. Um, and our guys are growing every day. Our morale has been up. Even though we've had a, a struggle season up to this point, our morale has been up, and we can do nothing but go up from here. Thank you, Coach. And, Payne, before you take it back, I have Diedrich Boyd with me for a few questions. One second. Boyd. You had a season high of 28 points in this game. I asked Coach, but how did you feel you got yourself open to hit those shots? Uh, really, my teammates. My teammates, without them, I can't get the shots. So I praise all my teammates for giving me the shots and stuff like that. But, yeah, season high 28, I mean, that's cool. I <laughs> thank my teammates. <laughs> Offensively, especially in the second half, you guys hit 56% of your shots. Yeah. So offensively, how are you able to share the ball and work together as a team to come back and win it? Uh, we just trust the process. Uh, first half, we won't make your shots. We knew the second half, we are going to make shots because that's how talented this team is. So really just trusting the process and just keep going with the game, just letting the game flow in. We got our shots in. There's six Division One transfers on this team. You all are starting to get to know each other. Six Division One. <laughs> but in this game, where do you feel like you got to know each other a little bit better? Uh, it's not particularly this game, though. It's a the past games and stuff like that, the games, even the games we lost, we started building the chemistry and stuff like that. We started hanging up more. We started getting the gym more and stuff like that. Started burning the chemistry. So, yeah, to this game, it was a hell of a game. Excuse my French, but it's a hell of a game, though. Thank you, boy. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. Payne, now it's yours. Diedrich Boyd was phenomenal, and he is the reason in large part why Tennessee State was able to eke out this win, and Penny Collins has dubbed kind of the mantra of this team. He says they need to deserve to win every time out. That is what they did. We thank you for joining us here from the Buck Dome. Final score, DSU 78.
Charleston Southern, 75. Happy holidays, everybody. We'll talk to you soon.